All right, uh, good afternoon, conversation two. Uh, this is the last lecture of the semester. We do have a few more classes where people are going to do presentations, um, but this is to just introduce the material, which we don't really have time for during class. Uh, hopefully we'll have a chance in the, the next few weeks to uh, talk about this, just discuss different ideas and how to answer these questions. As you know, there are 10 chapters in the textbook. I'm covering the last two. The first six will be, um, the first six that we did on the midterm. I will choose one for your first question on the exam and two from the, the most recent four chapters, chapters seven to 10. So we did chapter seven and eight, and now today we're doing nine and 10. There is a kind of beam of light coming through uh, the gap in the blinds. Um, I'm going to try not to get hit in the face while I'm lecturing, but it's kind of there separating. It's almost separating the topics left and right. On the left side, um, most of this was written in blue marker that was fading, but if you listen carefully, you won't have to read it as much as just listen to what I'm saying. Uh, chapter nine is called, What Have You Been Doing? And that's, um, that's a little bit of a vague uh, topic. It's just a question. And that's a good question. Uh, it's a great way to start a conversation. I think when you learn to speak another language, one of the first things you want to do is be able to introduce yourself. And then perhaps after that, be able to talk about your, your personality, your strong points or your weak points. Um, when I do interviews in Korean, um, usually what happens is I I'm fine with the self-introduction. I can talk about my strong points, my weak points, and then after that, yeah, it's a struggle. And it may end up costing me the interview because I can't really talk about specific things. But this, I think, this is probably a third in the list of important things to be able to um, talk about. Uh, present perfect continuous, the form, um, the question itself, what have you been doing, is asking uh, you to answer um, in the present perfect continuous. So it's something that you started doing before and you're doing it, still doing it now. Um, but I, I, you, you have the option, you have the option of just telling me something that you've been doing recently. But I, in my experience, uh, right from the first class that I taught in Korea, and there's lots of students who are not Korean, so it may be different in your country. But uh, one of the things that I used to do on Monday, and our classes are on Monday, one of the things I used to do is say, you know, how was your weekend? Uh, or what have you been doing? And they say, um, nothing special. That's, uh, I don't know if Koreans are still talking, answering the question that way, because I don't usually um, teach low level adults anymore, but I did. And usually that's what their answer was, nothing special. Well, okay, but tell me anyway, <laughs> tell me. Tell, you must have done something. Did you lay on the ground all weekend? Did you sleep all weekend? Sometimes they would say, yeah, I just slept all weekend. I ate some food, I watched TV, and I slept. That's a pretty boring answer, but at least you get to practice your grammar and how to say it. If you can say that, then good for you. If you have something more interesting to say, uh, and you have a more interesting life, that's better. Um, the second topic is about adventures today. So, I mean, that's the kind of thing you want to um, do, I think. Most people, some people like calm, relaxed, stable. That's good. Um, you like to rest. I, I get it. If you're working really hard, especially uh, Koreans who are, you know, businessmen or businesswomen and um, government officers, they, they work hard. They work long hours. So on the weekend, they just want to chill. That's fine. However, you are not um, working 75 hours a week. Uh, you're probably taking like 15 hours of class and then you have some assignments and homework. You may think that your life is very busy, but I assure you, it is not. Um, I'm, per you know, I'm doing my PhD and I'm a professor um, and I have other obligations too, including I have two kids. Um, that is an amount of hours that's far exceeding anything you have to deal with. Uh, so, you got more free time than you think. 
we're talking about routines. We're talking about how you spend your time. Specifically in the, at the top of the page, on page 102, it talks about, uh, it says, we're gonna talk about the average person. I'm not gonna do very much of that because I think we just went over. Talking about the average person isn't the most interesting thing. Uh, I'd rather you talk about yourself. If you are average, that's fine. Describe yourself. Uh, but we're not gonna talk about other people who are average. Um, we're gonna discuss how time is used, whether you're losing time, wasting time, spending time, passing time, and I added a couple more, uh, killing and saving. These are all similar expressions, but it's basically all about time management. So I, I call this uh, time management and adventures. Um, adventures require time management too, but sometimes your sense of time sort of disappears. Uh, but most people, uh, as I explained in the British and American culture class, we used to, human beings used to live sort of in a natural rhythm. We used to have, you know, we used to follow the seasons and you follow the daylight. So you, you'd, you'd um, work more in the, in the spring, in the summer, in the fall, especially if you're in agriculture and the vast majority of people were farmers. So, but even if you were a shopkeeper or, or, or a merchant, or even if you were a, an aristocrat, a noble person who was managing their lands and their, their uh, serfs and their, um, hopefully, I mean, there was a certain number of poor people um, bond, in bondage or slavery or indentured servants or whatever. If you're managing people or you're managing a business or you're in trade or you're a craftsman in the past, <clears throat> you probably would have opened your shop later in the winter and earlier in the summer, longer hours um, when there's more daylight, uh, partly because there wasn't electricity and there wasn't lamp fuel for, for hundreds and hundreds of years. Once ind industrialization happened and then we digitized everything so we can literally always look at either a watch or a smartphone or a computer or a digital display and see not only, you know, approximately what time it is, but exactly what time it is down to the second. Once that happened, our lives changed completely. Industrialized time and then digital time uh, has made our lives um, in, in some ways very efficient and organized and uh, effective, but in other ways very stressful. So you have to remember, and I'm one of these people, uh, because I worked in a factory and I had to punch in. Literally, if, if you punched in one minute late, it would take 15 minutes off your pay, right? And one second late. And uh, a few times this semester it's happened that students have tried to submit assignments. Um, the due date I always set is midnight. And then they, they try to submit it at uh, 11.59.55 and uh, the computer lags or the server lags or whatever and the, you know, the assignment deadline closes and they can't submit it. So then they take screenshots and they email me and say, oh, professor, I handed it in like 30 seconds late, please. I'm inclined you know, to forgive 30 seconds late in most cases, but actually it dis it's very disruptive because um, then I, if, if 25 people do that, I have to open up all the emails and check the assignments individually instead of having the convenience of all of them, you know, organized in the system and 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 the grades uh, can be inputted and saved all in one system, one neat system. And this is the problem. This is a problem. So we have a bit of a, I have a, a fear of being late. Um, British and American culture class, you know, the the uh, quizzes with the, like the hard deadline uh, is a bit of a nightmare for everybody. Uh, I have to make sure the parameters are exact and the students have to make sure they follow the instructions perfectly, otherwise it doesn't work. So this can create a lot of stress. Um, people, have re people deal with it in all different ways. So it's up to you to explain to me, uh, if you want to, your perspective about, I'm doing it right now, I'm telling you, it causes me stress, you know. I I, um, I try not to be late for things. Sometimes I 
do come into class a few minutes late, but that's usually because I've, I've, uh, I've uh, talked too long or another class has run late. So I haven't, I don't have enough time to actually physically move to a new class or, or ch get my material or, or get ready for the class. So I'm a few minutes late. All of you know that. Um, so those things, we, sh we should be flexible. We should be more flexible about um, deadlines. I, I, but some people are like me and, and uh, I don't like, I, I do <clears throat> have a very tight schedule. And if I have an appointment and somebody is 30 minutes late, uh, that bothers me a lot. Uh, some people don't care. Um, some of those people are my friends that don't care. That's why they come 30 minutes late, but that bothers me a lot. So you, you may be a more easygoing person or you may be a little bit more anxious person like me. Um, so um, you can describe your perspective, your personal um, type of routine, how you, how you manage your schedule or what your timetable is like or, or whatever, how you would like to change it. It doesn't even have to be how it is now. It can be what you're going to do, what you're planning to do, okay? So routine. Do you follow your routine? Do you keep your routine? Are you careful? Um, sometimes we need a break though, right? Especially if your routine, I mean, you can have a very healthy routine, uh, which is good. And I try, I, I would say mine is not, but I do have a routine. Um, probably the best thing about my routine is uh, I get up at six o'clock in the morning every day, even on the weekend. Um, and I rarely break that routine. Uh, part of the reason for that is because I have a dog and my dog uh, at seven o'clock or 7.30 at the latest, my dog wants his breakfast and he wants to walk. So if I'm gonna do work and I'm gonna get ready and change my clothes and take a shower, all that kind of stuff, six o'clock is when I need to get up. Sometimes 6.30, but um, unless I'm particularly exhausted on a given Saturday or Sunday, um, I'm up before seven, no matter what. On weekdays, I'm up at six. Uh, as far as bedtime is concerned and when I eat, uh, probably the worst thing about my routine is I, I eat erratically. I have a lot of classes um, starting usually at 10 o'clock in the morning and they usually run until six. Uh, it's very difficult to fit in lunch at the right time. Sometimes I eat lunch at noon, sometimes I eat it at 11, sometimes I eat it at two, sometimes I don't. Uh, that's a pretty horrible routine for eating lunch. Um, but that, that is reality. So um, breaking that routine or setting the routine, right? Or following the routine, that could be an important thing in your life. You can talk about that if you like. Um, when you go on vacation, you often break your routine. Um, I, when I go on vacation, I often go to Canada and uh, the routine, you, you have to somehow flip everything because we're 14 hours ahead of Canada. So um, you got to somehow adjust and create a new routine that matches your new environment. So you flip your routine and then, um, then you have to flip it back um, three weeks later if you come back to Korea, which I, that's what I do. Um, so that, that's a tough thing to do. But if you take a vacation for a week and you go to a resort uh, and you enjoy yourself and you have lots to eat and drink and you swim and you do activities and you, you go on adventures and stuff like that, uh, you may end up disrupting your t routine. And then when you come back to work or come back to school, a summer vacation or winter vacation, you might have a different routine. And then when you come back um, in the fall or the spring, or after Christmas, you, you gotta get back into it. And that, that can be tough to do, okay? So you can talk about routines. What's the difference between all these words about um, perspective on time? Well, I would say passing time is not the same as wasting time. Time always passes. But we, we in English, we actually, we say um, you have a past time, right? That's not a negative thing. Um, I often in, end up talking about this. Americans and Canadians, 
we consider a hobby has to be some sort of productive, active thing. So you have to be making something or learning something or developing yourself. Um, but a pastime, you don't. A pastime just means you're just um, doing something uh, that you like and the time passes faster, that's all. But it doesn't have to be productive. You don't have to collect something that's valuable. You don't have to build something. You don't have to improve your health or stimulate your brain. You just have to do something that helps the time go pass uh, better, faster, if you will. So like watching TV generally, or, or entertaining yourself, just listening to music, we don't consider those things hobbies, but they are pastimes. And that's, those are not bad things because often they're, they relieve your stress. So that's a good thing. So passing time is good, but it's not necessarily productive. Losing time, as you can imagine, is bad. You're losing time. Um, that means you need to do something and you're not doing it. Very similar to wasting time, right? Um, Losing time means that you don't know where it went. Sometimes you just like, um, you're supposed to be doing something and you forgot or you, you don't do it, right? That's, uh, that's one possibility. That's one possibility. Uh, another possibility is wasting time. It's like you're actively, you're actively doing something that's not people don't consider or you don't consider good for you. For example, just watching TV, just watching television and and watching anything, even though you're not interested in it. Or perhaps, like some students in our conversation classes uh, have already mentioned, playing computer games. I wouldn't say it's necessarily wasting time, but if you play for 10 hours, I, I would argue you've reached the point that um, you're getting, <laughs> you're, you could describe it as wasting time. It's too much, too much. Um, it doesn't matter what the activity is. You know, it's the same thing for anything else. If you if you uh, go out and drink with your friends for a few hours, I wouldn't say that's wasting time, but if you go out and drink with your friends all day, you might consider that wasting time. Same thing goes for computer games. You play computer games for, for a couple hours, no big deal, especially if you did your homework and you worked hard all day, that's, your, that's a pastime. That's you getting rid of your stress and rewarding yourself for what you did. If you're, spending your whole weekend playing games, you're wasting your time. Okay, killing time. Killing time is really, it's very similar. It's, it's just that you, you have extra time. This is something I don't do, but I did. I did when I was younger. I was just like, well, I have, I'm waiting for the bus for 30 minutes. So I need to somehow, you know, kill this time because there's, I'm just waiting. There's nothing, there's nothing for me to do. Um, so you might, listen to music or you might, uh, well, now you can play a game on your phone or something like that, or you might do something a little bit mindless, like, um, I don't know, I used to sometimes have a ball in my backpack, soccer ball or tennis ball or something and just throw it up in the air for like 15 minutes. Uh, Canadian buses are notorious for taking a long time to show up. So, you know, do whatever, twiddle your thumbs, whatever, just to kill some time. So killing time usually means it's not something you're necessarily interested in doing. You just have extra time you gotta get rid of. Um, I don't have that luxury anymore, and maybe you don't either. Saving time obviously is something everybody tries to do, right? One, there's different ways of doing that. Um, one of them is to do more than one thing at once, multitasking, concentrating on something and doing it better, right, in, for efficiency, Delegating, getting other people to do it for you. That's a good way of saving time. You, you, I mean, some people want to do things themselves, but you have to learn, especially if you're a leader or you're a manager, uh, you can't do everything yourself. Um, we, we talked about a bunch of different kings in um, British and American culture. One of them was French, not uh, English. His name was Louis XIV and he was a workaholic and he tried to do everything himself. He wasn't very good at delegating. And uh, that's probably a disadvantage. You need to be able to trust people and you need to get other people to do things for you. If you try to do everything yourself, you are going to run out of energy. You're going to burn out. You're gonna be stressed. You're gonna overwork. Louis XIV lived for a long time 
Uh, he wasn't a very healthy guy though by the, by the time he died, so that's not going to be good. And of course it creates a lot of stress if you have too much to do. Deferring is probably the worst idea. Deferring means do it later. Uh, sometimes you have to defer because you have too much, but um, generally deferring, um, especially when you're a university student, unless you're sick, unless you have a real emergency or you have a critical amount of work to do all at once, which you didn't know about a month ago, but you probably did, then deferring is not the best way to do it. But deferring means to delay. Um, it's, a, it's a polite way of saying, you procrastinated, you were lazy, you didn't do it last week, so now you have to do it today. And you might ask for a deferral, and your professor might say, no, I gave you one month to do this, the deadline is tomorrow, you have to do it, tough. That's the normal response. But if you do have a real excuse, for example, a few people got COVID, uh, couldn't do their presentations because of sickness, and they documented it, and so their presentations were delayed. That's a deferral. That's allowed, all right? So there you go. Okay, there's lots of other things, um, you know, related to time and management. Um, read some of the stuff from the book. What do we got here? I, they got the clocks there. There's an article about wasting time. But one of the things that I hate the most is um, traffic. I think traffic is just basically a waste of time. I usually listen to um, lectures and music and uh, audiobooks in my car, but still, I still hate sitting in traffic. It, it's bad for the environment, it's, it's uh, frustrating, and um, you wanna get, maybe you're hungry, you wanna get home for dinner or whatever. I, I avoid driving in Korea between six and seven whenever possible. I think 6 p.m. until seven is the worst. Uh, also, I'm very thankful that most Korean students do not like to start class at 9 a.m. because the uh, front gate of Chungnam at, from 8 a.m. until 9 p.m., uh, well, it is always bad, but from 8 until 9 in the morning uh, is awful. Uh, I come from Yusung Unchan, from Yusung Spa uh, direction, and I come by the subway station, and uh, that is a, there's a traffic jam that's like three kilometers long every single morning between eight and nine. So that to me, that's, a, that's one of the ultimate wastes of time is everybody sitting in their car waiting to get in to the university at the same time. So I usually, I would prefer to come to, the, to my office earlier, but I usually don't come here until 9.30 because it's so much less stressful and it's so much more, it's so much easier to just get here without almost uh, without bumper to bumper um, traffic. All right, the Adventure Time one, I think is a very easy topic and um, hopefully you enjoy talking about it. Adventures normally need some sort of challenge, which means that it can't be easy. Uh, an adventure can't be an e easy thing. There's some sort of danger and risk, like you gotta put something, maybe it's your health, maybe it's your money, maybe uh, something else. Um, it, usually adventures have some sort of danger or risk involved in them. This is related to it, it being exciting. It, if, if there was no possibility of things going badly, then you wouldn't be, you know, it, you wouldn't be excited. That makes sense. It would be boring or it would be less interesting if not boring. Some people prefer safety. I understand that, but you wouldn't really call it a great adventure if you're walking to school. That's not an adventure. Um, normally there wouldn't be any excitement, risk, unfamiliar things or challenges. You would just walk to school without any interference or challenges along the way. So um, adventures normally, they, they have to be different, right? They have to stand out. It, this is almost the opposite of what we're talking about when we say routine. Adventures are not routine. They are not expected. They're not planned. I mean, you can plan to go on an adventure, but real adventures, okay? Not amusement parks and stuff like that, where you go on, oh, this is a safari and I'm in a bus and there's an elephant <coughs> and there's a giraffe, <coughs> excuse me, and there's a lion, there's a zebra. That, that's, a, that's not a real adventure. That's sort of just, um, I don't know, tourist 
entertainment observation. If you were, uh, if you went to the, the Serengeti and you are in a Jeep, um, and if a cheetah decide to, you know, chase you and jump in there and eat one of the people in the vehicle, uh, I would call that an adventure. But if you go to a zoo and you go through and you look at animals in cages and stuff, that's not an adventure. That, that's interesting. And you're enjoying, you're being amused, but that's not an adventure. So let's be clear. Adventure, adventure usually requires these things. It has to be different than the ordinary. It has to be extraordinary, right? Exotic, maybe extraordinary is an extraordinary, better way to do it. Uh, in the book, they give you examples of famous people like Marco Polo, uh, British and American culture, Sir Francis Drake, he's an awesome example of an explorer, um, adventurer, pirates, Navy officer, um, and a few other things too, scoundrel, gambler, um, sl um, slave trader, etc. These, But these are adventures, right? Um, Robinson Crusoe, um, written by William Defoe, is, is one of the first uh, books that is considered a novel in English literature. Before that, things were dramas and poetry um, and epics and other things like that, letters, essays. Um, but he wrote uh, about Robinson Crusoe's adventures on uh, the ocean and on a desert island. And when he wrote them, people thought it wasn't they didn't know, a lot of people didn't know it was fiction. A lot of English people thought that Robinson Crusoe was a real person and that William Defoe was writing a travel log. So he was writing like a diary of something that really happened, that Robinson Crusoe had actually done these things, like, you know, gone to Brazil and gone to a desert island and lived there by himself and like, you know, um, gone on ships and, and had shipwrecks multiple times and returned to England eventually and, and uh, done all these it been interesting it had all these interesting adventures but it was all imaginary well a lot of people when they wrote it uh, a lot of people when they read what he wrote excuse me they thought it was real they thought Robinson Crusoe was a real person so that's the kind of thing there's lots of heroes that go on adventures you can go all the way back to Greek mythology or Norse mythology or in your case if you're from um, another country, the Middle East, or you're from um, Asia, you might, there might be a famous hero or, or, or explorer, um, warrior, or whatever, who you want to describe. Of course, you can talk about yourself if you have an adventure. You can talk about a famous person, a myth, right? It can be personal, historical, mythical, or it can be fantastical. It can be a, a fantasy adventure. Harry Potter had lots of adventures. It's up to you. Choose whatever you want. Um, just to add a few more aspects, you know, to, to, th there's a lot of good students, let me say. I said this already, the interviews in the midterm were excellent. So the more detail, the more aspects, the more color and more description, the better your grammar, the better you communicate um, on any question uh, will make, probably make the difference between uh, your grade being higher or lower. The, the ability of the students is very high this semester, and I think um, small things are gonna make a difference. So in the case of an ad adventure, uh, I said adventure time because I, I like that cartoon. I know it's a little bit childish, but Finn and Jake, uh, there's a real little, it was kind of a crazy cartoon that was created um, a few years back, uh, and uh, I enjoyed watching that cartoon. It's called Adventure Time. And Finn is like a, a boy who goes on crazy magical adventures in mountains, through dimensions, talks to dragons who speak Korean and all kinds of weird stuff. Uh, there's lots of wizards and, and strange creatures uh, in that show, which is why it's called Adventure Time. It's time for an adventure. If you want to tell a good adventure, you need to think about things. Uh, what's the weather like? Usually the weather, sometimes in adventures, the weather suddenly changes or it's, you know, different than normal. It's a, it's kind of extreme weather. Um, being outdoors is often, adventures are normally not indoors, not inside. Although if you're in a castle or you're underground or something like that, that would be fine. Um, usually it's not somewhere close because again, familiar, you don't usually have adventures, you know, in your house. 
usually travel somewhere. It doesn't necessarily have to be on the other side of the planet or on the moon, but being farther away from your home base is part of an adventure too. You, you've got the aspect of uh, things, you know, nature, jungles, um, geography, right? Mountains, rivers, um, cliffs, uh, oceans, powerful natural elements. And then of course there's um, human, artifice means artificial, things that are made by human beings like giant old castles or walls or machines or robots or whatever. Sometimes there's an element of mystery involved. Uh, thinking about um, movies, for an example, um, advent famous adventure movies like, like Indiana Jones. Um, he's an archeologist, he, he's finding all these clues and trying to find these ancient artifacts and there's all kinds of traps and uh, that's a typical adventure you know, series. It's a, it's, it's a multiple movies, um, four of them I think in total. But um, those involve mysterious things that people don't know about. Those are always good <coughs> to add to adventure stories too. And of course, some of us play games um, where you can have adventures and you can play characters and uh, the adventure games are very popular. Sometimes they include millions and millions of people playing in the same environment and they're all having sort of parallel or interacting adventures together. Uh, and of course, simulation can do that too. You don't necessarily have to leave your house if you are engaging in some sort of simulated adventure environment through your computer or another uh, electronic device that provides you with an adventure you can experience electronically and digitally. Yeah, so uh, I think that gives you lots of options. And uh, if you have any further questions about these topics, you may ask me in class because we have several classes left. But um, it's good to be done these lectures and um, um, yeah, well, I'm looking forward to doing finishing the presentations and and listening to your answers on the the exam as well. So uh, please watch this video and get credit for the attendance and uh, we'll have the final um, in December as I as I mentioned before. Have a good day and uh, I'll see you uh, on Monday.